Aya has returned permanently as the new way to get relics for old Prime Warframes. With a different two sets of Primes available every month, let's look at the newly updated drop tables and how you can get higher the fastest. I'm the Engineer, let's solve a practical problem. If you like seeing practical solutions to practical problems, you should join my live streams over on Twitch. The link to that is in the video description. Aya is the resource you need to purchase unvaulted relics. These let you earn prime frames and weapons that were released a while ago and have since fallen out of the normal loot pool. To clear up some confusion, normal Aya is the free and farmable version used to get the relics, whilst Regal Aya is bought for real money from DE. There is no way to farm Regal Aya in-game. Normal Aya has a variety of sources with a variety of mission types and drop rates. The different locations are all Void missions, most Ostron bounties, all normal Solaris United bounties, all Intrati Field bounties, all Zaraman bounties, and Relic Packs. Relic Packs can be obtained from the open world mining NPCs, such as Old Man Sunbart in Cetus, Smokefinger in Fortuna, and Otak in the Necrolisk. All three of them sell a pack of three relics for 20,000 standing. Other places are the six core syndicates, again for 20,000 standing per pack, Teshin Steel Path Honors for 15 Steel Essence per pack, or if you're absolutely insane, you could buy a 5 relic pack for 50 platinum. I strongly advise you don't spend 10 platinum per relic like that, but then it's not like I can really stop you. So while we're talking relic packs, are they actually any good? With a total of 332 packs counted from various players and sources, this procured a grand total of 73 ire, paying out 1 ire in roughly every 4-5 to five packs. It is possible to get a triple ire pack, but they definitely do not happen often. With the maximum standing you can get per syndicate per day being 32,000 at Legendary 2, this means maxing out your standing with all three open world syndicates will average out to one ire per day. For the six core syndicates, the passive standing from pledging to a syndicate will net you an average of around one ire every two days. You can get even more standing through doing the daily syndicate missions. Most players looking to actively use their syndicate standing will be able to maintain up to three syndicates for their missions. Those missions will afford you 3 relic packs per day from the mission standing rewards on average, and a further roughly 4 relic packs per day from finding all the syndicate medallions. This will vary based on the missions available to you on any given day, but it should average out to around another 1.5 ire per day. And then looking at the steel path, at 15 essence per pack and a roughly 22% chance of ire per pack, this comes out to 68 steel essence per ire, ignoring the extra relics you get in those packs. The rate at which you can farm Steel Essence will vary greatly, depending on your loadout, boosters and mission choice. In any case, it'll typically take two days worth of Steel Path incursions, including the Acolyte spawns, for a single piece of Aya. Looking at these results, Relic Packs are not a worthwhile farm for Aya. They're an option when you've got standing lying around to give yourself a boost, but otherwise not worth putting your time into. So let's look at some actual mission drops then. Every Void mission has a chance to give you a piece of Aya on mission or round completion. The lowest rate is 6.15% found on rotations A and B of any survival, while the absolute highest percentage is 22.11% for rotation C of both Mot Survival and Mithra Interception, but those two require three prior rounds of a much lower percentage. Taking into account mission time, the fastest option in the Void, and probably no surprise to Warframe veterans, is to simply speedrun the capture missions Hepit and Doko. These both have identical 6.67% drop rates. If you run one mission per minute, you'll earn 4 ire per hour. Just 15 runs of Hepit will give you as much ire on average as maxing out all three open world syndicates at Legendary 2. While tier 4 void missions like Mithra all have higher drop percentages, they take so much longer to run that they simply do not compete. At best, you could get just over 2 ire per hour from Mithra Interception with an efficient squad. Now, instead of constantly dashing through the void, you can instead look to the open world bounties. On the Plains of Eidolon, the tier 2, 3, 4 and 5 bounties all can award ire, as well as the Ghoul Purge bounties when they're available. Likewise, for the Orb Valis and Cambion Drift, all standard field bounties can reward ire. However, bounties against Nama, the Exploiter and Profit Taker orbs, Eidolon bosses and into the Isolation Vaults all have no Aya rewards. In general, the higher the tier of bounty, the more Aya you can get. Achieving all bonus objectives with any given bounty is crucial, as it significantly increases your Aya per hour. 
around 30-40% to more for the best bounties to pick. Overall, here's the higher per hour you can get, assuming you spend 2 minutes per stage on each bounty. As ever, the faster you run, the more higher you will get. For all 3 open worlds, assuming you can secure the full bonus objective, you are looking at around 10 higher per hour, far outstripping any of the other options so far. Now with this update, DE also added higher drops to the Zaraman bounties, which didn't exist last resurgence. Every tier of bounty there, 1 through 5, has an higher drop on the table for simply completing the mission and side objective. As I covered in the video on farming everything on the Zaraman, the fastest mission to do is the Exterminate bounty, which most people should be able to complete in 4 to 5 minutes. That's if you're not looking for void plumes. Sadly, the drop rates for higher from those bounties go no higher than 12.34%. With just one drop per mission, that puts the rates for higher at less than 2 per hour, closer to 1 per hour for most players. If your focus is on higher rather than the Zaraman rewards, this would be a bad place to go. So if you really want to get as much higher as possible, then it's early lunch for Konzu. Go do some bounties to earn all of the vaulted relics. If you found this video helpful, then subscribe to the channel to catch more as it goes live. And as always, farm higher, get relics, and fight well Tenno.